A couple of weeks ago, I tweeted a comparison of Mike Trout's 2014 season when he won his first LMVP award and Trout's 2018 season. My point was to show how much Trout has improved by leaps and bounds even after winning the top yearly award. Somehow, Red Sox fans took that tweet as a slight to Mookie Betts. Debates ensued. Let's further those debates here, shall we? Obviously, so many things could change between now and the end of the season. This isn't a prediction of how the final order will be, just a look at how the race stacks up right now. Numbers, as always, courtesy of baseball reference and fan graphs. 1. Mike Trout, Angels. 309.459.624, 197 ops plus, 30 home runs, 21 stolen bases, 82 runs, 60 RBIs, 191 WRC plus. 315 ISO, 7.84, 7.64 Trout is firmly established himself as the best player in baseball, and if this wrist injury is truly a minor hiccup, he received a courtesan shot Monday and is listed as day-to-day, -day. he could be on the way to posting the best season of his career. For a guy with two MVP awards and four seasons with a dwarf of 9.0 or higher, that's really saying something. And of course, it needs to be said that 2018 Trout isn't competing against 2012-17 Trout for the 2018 MVP award. He's competing against a field of outstanding players having great years. So, he leads the majors in war, both by the baseball reference and fan graphs calculations, and also leads the majors leagues in ops, ops plus, on base percentage, walks, times on base, intentional walks, WRC plus and WOBA. In the AL. He's top 5 in batting average, slugging percentage, ISO, runs scored, total bases, home runs and stolen base percentage. Here's the tweet that sparked the debate in my mentions, by the way. 2. Mookie Betts, Red Sox 342.428.652, 184 ops plus, 26 home runs, 21 stolen bases, 89 runs, 58 RBIs, 186 WRC plus. 310 ISO, 7.1 Dwarf, 6.74 bets finished second in the 2016 MVP voting, a handful of votes behind Trout. And here's the thing that production in 2018 dwarfs most of the numbers he put out that year. That sounds familiar, eh? In 2016, Betts hit .318 with 31 homers, 26 stolen bases and an 897 ops. This year he's at .342 with 26 homers, 21 stolen bases, already, and a 1. 080 ops. Any conversation that doesn't include Betts as one of baseball's best players is a conversation that should be adjusted quickly. Let's discuss a talking point that Red Sox fans love to bring up. As they're quick to point out, Betts plays for baseball's best team. That means, they figure, Betts should get the advantage because the Angels would miss the playoffs with or without Trout, right? Look, I'm not going to claim to know the minutes of every single voter, but I can confidently tell you that even though playoff bound might have been a primary consideration in past generations, it's very low on the collective priority list, if it's there at all. 
I know that when I had a vote for the 2014 NL MVP award, a team's final place in the standings wasn't much more than an afterthought. This is the award that's supposed to honor the best player in the league, and dinging a player just because his teammates have struggled seems, well, silly. Hell, if anything, it's harder to put up good offensive numbers when the guys around you in the lineup are struggling, so maybe the Angels' issues should actually be a boost for Trout. 3. Jose Ramirez, Indians.300.410.629, 172 offs plus, 33 home runs, 26 stolen bases, 78 runs, 83 RBIs, 174 WRC plus. 329 ISO, 7.4 Bore, 7.54 as the Athletics' Jason Stark pointed out Tuesday morning. Ramirez has a chance to become the first player in AL history, and only the second in MLB history, to lead his league in home runs, tied for first, extra base hits, alone in first, and stolen bases, tied for first. That's just incredible. And, just to keep this hold this guy just keeps getting better train moving, Ramirez finished third in the AL MVP voting last year, when he posted a six. 9 war, 29 homers, 83 RBIs, 17 stolen bases and a .957 ops in 152 games. Take a look at the previous paragraph and you can see that he's either eclipsed or tied those numbers already in just 110 games. Incredible. Other notables any other year, a guy with 27 homers, 96 runs, 17 stolen bases and a 6. 5 floor in early August just might be the favorite to win the MVP award. This year, Linder is fourth in the running, at best. It's a tough year to be awesome. Bet you didn't know Chapman's floor is already up to 6. Two on the season. He's been very good at the plate, 15 homers, 137 ops plus in 97 games, but where he's elite is with his glove. He's going to win multiple gold gloves, probably starting this year. You'd be hard pressed to find any free agent, ever, who has had a better first year than Martinez has had with the Red Sox. He's tied for the MLB lead with Jose Ramirez with 33 homers and leads the bigs with 93 RBIs and 261 total bases to go with a 324 average and 1.033 ops. Think about this, we're in early August and Ramirez already has a 4. 8 war is a designated hitter. Know how many times legendary Boston DH David Ortiz had a full season bore higher than 5? 2. A Mark Martinez should easily pass twice. That's it. He leads the all with a 2. 0 for ERA and 2.07 fit, and his strikeout numbers, 13.2 per 9 innings, are downright stupid. There are plenty of L starters having outstanding seasons, as many as seven or eight will receive top three Cy Young votes, but Sale has been the best of the bunch so far. In a field this competitive, missing multiple weeks is a crushing blow to anyone's MVP chances. Judge has been pretty great, though. Same thing goes for the 2017 AL MVP, if his knee injury keeps him out. He's been great again, 0.329 average, 141 offs plus, but his power numbers are down a tiny bit, and, yeah, the competition for the award is as intense as it's ever been.